us back a few years. Take us through that journey to where we are right here, right now. My late father-in-law, Vincent, um, was an avid collector of Bahamian art starting right before Bahamian independence. Vincent just got very friendly and comfortable with a lot of the leading artists of the day, with Kendall Hanna, with Max Taylor, with Brett Malone, with Antonius Roberts, really that first wave mm -hmm. of master artists. And he started buying a few pieces here, a few pieces there. So he really was, I think, the first real patron of the fine arts in the Bahamas and was in the fold with the artists. In order for the collection to really be appreciated, mm -hmm. we needed to have some exhibition space. Right. And this building was Vincent's very old office years ago. Right here. Right here. Tell us a little bit about the technical side of what you had to do to get it to this level and what are the secrets that may exist behind doors? Well, you know, it had to be a multifunctional space. Okay. So one of the key needs was to um, store the art safely. We have all the Bahamian paintings here. Yeah. And then on the other side, we have some Bahamian paintings. We also have the large format storage for the very big works. Where do you think Bahamian art, what, what, where is its platform? Where do you think it's going? Where, where, where do you think is, is the tone of its voice nowadays? And where do you think it's going tomorrow? Well, I think that there has finally sort of an acceptance level has been reached. Mm -hmm. um, I think within the art community and also by the connoisseurs of art, that Bahamian art isn't just cute and pretty. No. That was a huge struggle for many years where mm -hmm. it was like, what do you mean this is Bahamian art? There's no palm tree or poinciana tree in the paintings. Right, or yellow well Bahamian or... art. So I think we've actually conquered that mountain, Good. which I think was a huge effort.